Good morning. We're only going to have two stories this week because they're kind of interesting stories. Uh, they're more about technology and trends than sometimes uh, I cover. The first one of these is truly fascinating. Once in a blue moon, a new technology comes along that could potentially change everything. In this case, there was an announcement uh, this past week that Minnesota utility Great River Energy uh, was going to pilot a new storage technology from startup Form Energy. It was going to replace coal with 1,100 megawatts of dispatchable wind, getting to a 95% carbon-free grid. So what? So here's the what. They're going to use this one megawatt aqueous air battery system from Form Energy, expected to be delivered by 2023, that is said to be able to deliver 150 hours of continuous power, which would help to address that old question of what happens when the sun don't shine and the wind don't blow, like when you have an atmospheric river over California with copious amounts of rain for days so the solar panels aren't harvesting the energy we need. But, um, 150 hours of, of storage could certainly help to fill that bucket and it would allow for a far greater penetration of renewables energy into the space than we can see with the tools we have today. The critical issue here is going to be the commercial and competitive one. One of the challenges with other longer duration technologies like um, flow batteries, uh, compressed air, etc., is that lithium ion, which is somewhat this tick that rides the electric vehicle dog, the EV scale from gigafactories allows for battery costs to fall 50% in the last two years, as we mentioned last week. So lithium ion sits there in this enviable position of getting cheaper and cheaper. And meanwhile, it sort of tears out the soft underbelly of the available markets, especially that fast response stuff like frequency regulation and grid balancing, where lithium ion can follow a signal really, really well. So what it, it does is it essentially starves these competitive technologies or could be competitive technologies like flow batteries, where they just don't have access to those markets. So unless Form Energy can come in with a resource that's relatively cheap and allows it to also access those markets cost competitively, it's going to be a challenge to find enough opportunities for long duration storage certainly in the short run, to enable it to scale and to continue to fight that juggernaut of lithium ion right now. If it can, this truly can change the market and create a really big glide path uh, for more renewables coming into the system in the years and decades to come. Second story is um, around COVID and solar. The good news coming out of that is the companies like Sunrun and SunPower have adjusted very, very quickly. Both of them just had their quarterly earnings statements, did relatively well, and both of them have emphasized what they're doing in terms of this Erica Zhang-like contactless world they're moving into. Um, they basically moved very rapidly into digital sales. So SunPower indicated that 95% of its sales are digital. They're getting more leads in a shorter period of time because they don't have to drive around with salespeople and vehicles. Everybody's home right now, so they're able to contact a lot of folks relatively quickly. Now, close rates are less, but nonetheless, um, Sunrun indicated their highest day of sales ever was in late April. The other thing that's really fascinating is, for example, the, the software we're seeing. SunPower has this custom designed software that allows customers to work with sales agents remotely, and they can now do designs on rooftops of people's homes. It used to take 30 minutes in that turnaround. Now it's 30 seconds. So homeowners and reps essentially can review solar design options on rooftops in real time. And the other thing that's improved very quickly is remote permitting and site inspection. Sunrun's actually enlisting customers to take pictures inside the house that then become part of the digital permits. Many municipalities are opening up digital permitting offices and those capabilities are increasing. And so in an extreme case, uh, Sunrun's CEO, Lynn Jurek, indicated that um, just to highlight what's possible, she said, quote, San Luis Obispo moved to an instant permit and we were able to, just last week, do a same day install. So the customers signed up in the morning, we got the permit through, and we installed in the afternoon. So really good news for driving the costs of uh, solar installations down. Not so good news for the smaller mom and pop shops who will not have the money to invest in similar sophisticated software. This is going to separate some of the, the leaders from the rest of the pack when we come out of the COVID uh, period, however long that takes. So those are the two stories this week I thought were really fascinating. And thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you next week.